Hey, what's going on guys, Arian here. And a couple days ago, Samsung had their unpacked event and just like we were all expecting, they released a slew of new hardware. And in today's video, we're gonna talk about three phones, the Galaxy S10, the Galaxy S10 Plus, and the Galaxy S10e. So let's start with the middle child, the Galaxy S10. So there's really three big differences whenever you compare the S10 to last year's S9. And the first one that you're gonna notice as soon as you pick up the phone is the new display. Samsung's calling it a cinematic infinity display. And what they were able to do is use a laser to precisely cut a hole that just fits the camera. And they built the pixels around that hole. So it leads to less bezels, more display, and I think importantly for a lot of us, no notch. Now the displays obviously look fantastic. Samsung makes the best displays on the market. So it looks great and you get a much larger screen to body ratio. So everything looks pretty cool. Now major change number two is you're no longer gonna have a fingerprint sensor on the back of the phone. So Samsung's taken that sensor and moved it to the front and built it into the display and they call it ultrasonic fingerprint ID. The way it works is the phone uses sound waves to detect the ridges of your thumb or whichever finger you use in 3D. And what that means is it should be more secure than some of the uh, other setups we've seen on phones like a OnePlus 6T. Um, and at the same time, they say it should be faster. I don't know how accurate that claim is, but I can definitely get on board whenever they say it should be more secure. A setup like we see on the OnePlus 6T shines a really bright light onto your finger to authenticate that it's yours, but this one uses actual technology and the specific ridges of your fingerprint to authenticate. And that's pretty cool. It's a simple concept, but it sounds really cool. And your third major change is your camera setup. Actually, third major change and you have three cameras now on the back of the phone. You have a 12 megapixel wide angle, you have a 12 megapixel telephoto, and you have a 16 megapixel ultra wide lens. Now these three lenses are gonna help you capture a whole bunch of different types of photos without losing much image quality. And I'm excited for this new camera setup for a couple of reasons. One, Samsung at one point in time used to have like the best cameras on any smartphone and they've kind of fallen behind in the last few years to Google and Apple. So I'm hoping this year Samsung will kind of take it up a notch with the cameras. And number two, Samsung briefly talked about using artificial intelligence to enhance the camera's ability. And we know that this is what makes Google king whenever it comes to taking smartphone photos. Um, Google doesn't like to pack a whole bunch of lenses on the back of the phone. They just use computational photography to make photos look a lot nicer. Now, Samsung's brought out a neural processing unit that's in all the Galaxy S10s that are coming out. And it's supposed to help the phone better detect uh, scenery and things like that in order to optimize things like color balance um, whenever you're taking photos. I don't know how much of an impact it's going to have on new photos, but I'm excited to see where the S10 is going to place compared to other phones on the market. So that just about does it with the three biggest differences on the Galaxy S10. Now there are other things that I'm interested in, of course, like the updated performance thanks to the Snapdragon 855 and even something really cool but potentially gimmicky in the reverse power share. Um, but we're gonna talk about the bigger sibling now, the Galaxy S10 Plus, and what you get with the S10 Plus versus the S10. Now when it comes to the S10 Plus, let's start with differences that you will actually be able to see. And there's only two of them. Now you're gonna get a larger screen. The S10 Plus comes in at 6.4 inches, while the S10 comes in at 6.1 inches, so slightly larger, and on the front, the S10 has a single hole cut out for one camera lens. The S10 Plus has more of an oval shape cut out for two camera lenses. Both of them will come with a standard 10 megapixel selfie camera. The only difference is the S10 Plus is going to give you an eight megapixel telephoto lens so you can take portrait selfies. And difference number two, something you can't physically see is a larger battery, which makes sense, right? The phone is bigger, so naturally it packs a larger cell. And it packs a really big cell at that. The Galaxy S10 Plus has a 4,100 milliamp hour battery compared to the Galaxy S10's 3,400. Both of them are still really decently sized and both of them should get you through at least one day with no problem. But at 4,100 milliamp hours, you're talking larger battery than the Galaxy Note 9. And my Galaxy Note 9, gets me to the end of the day with like 60% battery left. So I'm assuming the S10 Plus will have really, really good battery life. So that's something that's definitely exciting. Last thing, the Samsung Galaxy S10 starts at $900 
and the Samsung Galaxy S10 Plus starts off at a cool $1,000. And I think Samsung kind of did this on purpose because both phones are strategically priced $100 cheaper than the iPhone XS and the iPhone XS Max. And both of these phones come fully loaded, packed with tons of awesome features. I cannot wait to get the S10 Plus in. I've already pre-ordered mine, should be in on March 8th with a free pair of the Galaxy Buds 2. So be sure to subscribe whenever we get to that unboxing. But for now, let's jump to the more affordable and colorful option, the Galaxy S10e. So the Galaxy S10e looks to be Samsung's answer to Apple's iPhone XR. It's priced at $749. It should be coming out in a variety of different colors. And there are certain features or changes made to the phone in order to reduce the price, but those changes are definitely not deal breakers. So let's go over everything that's different between the Galaxy S10e and the Galaxy S10. Starting off with the display, you're going to get the smallest screen size on the Galaxy S10e coming in at 5.8 inches versus 6.1 on the Galaxy S10. You are also getting reduced display resolution coming in at full HD versus quad HD found on the Galaxy S10, but you're still retaining the hole punch display and you're still retaining the same 10 megapixel selfie camera that's found on the Galaxy S10. One other difference in terms of the display itself, there's no ultrasonic fingerprint sensor on the Galaxy S10e. You have a capacitive fingerprint sensor built in to the power button on the side of the phone. So you still get minimal bezels, you just don't have a fingerprint sensor built into the screen. Now moving on to the back of the phone, you're also gonna see a change up in the camera system. The S10 and S10 Plus have three lenses. The S10e only has two. Now when I first saw that it only had two, I figured maybe they would omit the ultra wide angle, but no, they kept the wide angle and they kept the ultra wide angle and Samsung omitted the telephoto lens. So the S10e looks to be a phone that is not capable of taking any of the artificial portrait mode shots, but you never know. It could potentially be built into the software using that neural processing unit similar to Apple's iPhone XR. So we really won't know until that phone comes out. But as it stands right now, and the way Samsung configured the lenses on the phone, it's implying that the phone will not be taking any artificial telephoto or bokeh effect shots. And lastly, smallest phone of the bunch unfortunately means smallest battery of the bunch. So you're going to be working with a battery that's sitting at 3100 milliamp hours. The S10 sits at 3400, so not too much of a difference there. But the S10 Plus sits at 4100, so huge difference. But again, 5.8 inch display and phone size versus 6.4. So yeah, you will be also dealing with the smallest battery, but I'm hoping with performance optimizations in the Snapdragon 855, the 3100 is still enough to get some people to the end of the day. But I guess we'll see how it goes once the phone comes out. Now, there was another variant of the Galaxy S10 announced at the Unpacked event, but we don't know too much about it, and that's the Galaxy S10 5G. Now, we know some core specs, and that includes the display size coming in at 6.7 inches, the battery size coming in at 4,500 milliamp hours, and that there's now four camera lenses on the back of that phone versus three, the fourth lens being a 3D depth lens. Now on the front of that device, you still do have two cameras as well, one of them being your 10 megapixel wide angle and another one being that same 3D depth camera found on the back of the device. And obviously based on the name, the phone is made to work with a 5G network. Now the unfortunate part is there aren't really any cell phone carriers in the United States ready to use 5G yet. So that phone's kind of stuck in limbo, plus it's not coming out anytime soon anyways. It's supposed to come out from what Samsung said in Q2. So hopefully sometime in the first half of this year, just know that it's coming, just know that it's gonna work with 5G and just know that it's going to be really expensive, but we'll keep you posted on the details of that phone as time goes on. And I know what you guys are thinking, there was a fifth phone announced at Unpacked as well, the Samsung Galaxy Fold. And my answer to that is, we are going to make an entirely separate video over the Samsung Galaxy Fold, talk about what it is, how it works, and, how we feel about a foldable smartphone that costs nearly $2,000. So make sure you're subscribed because we will be uploading that video soon. If you have any other questions in terms of the Galaxy S10, S10 Plus, S10e, S10 5G, leave them in the comment section down below. But that just about does it for the unpacked event in terms of what phones were released, guys. I'm gonna get out of here. I hope you guys enjoyed watching. Thank you so much. Peace.
Now, major change number two is you're no longer gonna have a fingerprint sensor on the back of the phone. Samsung's taking it and moving, moving it. Not again. That's not good. <laughs> that's, not, that's not good. You keep that one. 